So my name is Johannes, um, and I'm going to be talking about Rollup today. So I'm on Twitter, and so I bought way too many Christmas jumpers this year. And I'm, I'm like away for half of December, so I didn't know what to do. And so I asked a question on Twitter, should I wear this today? And apparently some people wanted that, so I guess here I am. Eight votes. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I'm going to be talking about Rollup. And Rollup says that it's the next generation ES6 module bundler. So before we go more into what Rollup actually does, I kind of want to give like a refresher on modules and like ES6, ES2015 modules specifically. So you probably may already know this, but I just want to quickly go through this so that we're all on the same page. So we have default exports. So let's say we have a module like power of two. And then this is a function. So if we export this, we use the keywords export default. And then to import this function and to use it, we would then say import power of two from where, we, where the file is. And then we can call this with whatever parameters we like. So there's another thing called named exports. They work similarly, but not quite. So you would instead say you have different, different um, things that you export out of it. Like let's say this is like a math library and you have an add, a multiply, or a divide, or many more other functions as well. So you would go out and then declare them as export and then constant, for example. So to use that somewhere else, you would then say, I'm importing this, and I'm kind of like destructuring this out of the file. So I'm just need add in this case. So I would say, take add, and then use this from the mass library, and then do whatever you want with it. In this case, well, add two numbers. Another option is, um, oh, I forgot the slide. Um, is to actually use the namespace. So you could use the star and then say, import everything as mass and then use it as an object. In this case, it would be mass.add, for example. So, and now this is a really exciting feature. I really like this feature, which is called export ex extensions. So this is stage one currently, so not a bit experimental, but I still use it everywhere. Um, so what it does is, Let's say you have like an aggregator index file, which I always have. So in most of my React projects, I have something like, oh yeah, I've got like a button, like an icon or whatever element. And then I aggregate that into an index.js file. So usually I would say, well, import this thing and then export this again as something else. So this gets kind of like hard to write after a while, and obviously it's a bit error prone because you would say, oh, well, a new thing comes in, I need to first import it, and then add this to this object, and so on and so forth. So this is a huge source of errors. So with export ext extensions, you could instead write export something directly. And so this will build up this object directly. And similar to with the import namespacing. With this export extensions, we also have export something as something else, for example. All right. So let's get more into rollup now that we know kind of what ES 2015 module are. Um, so the first thing that we need to do, well, obviously install rollup. Um, you can install it globally. I usually have it as a dev dependency in my projects so that I don't have, or so that anyone else in my team doesn't need to install it globally. So, and then how you would use it is, well, you can use it by command line and say, well, this is my module, uh, put this in as an input, and then the output should be this JS, and the, the format it should output would be common JS. So, let's take like this, I kind of have like some contrived 
I have some contrived examples, unfortunately. So this is an example where I would like import a function from Lodash and then I have some words and then I'm taking like the, the first word and then console logging this and then exporting this as a module. So if I run this through ro rollup, I get this. So as you see, like all of the, um, all of the module imports and module exports are now common JS, but everything else stays at as it is. So there's no transformation anywhere. So we saw that we can use rollups through the command line, but obviously after a while, like this gets longer and longer and many more parameters. So we kind of rather want to use a configuration. So what we can do is we can just create a rollup.config.js and then we would put in, well, still my module and output and the format is still the same, but now we have it as JavaScript, so it's easier to, to well, easier to configure when it gets complicated. All right, so one of the things that I want to talk about, or like now, now I'm kind of getting into like the features that Rollup has and makes Rollup special. One of the things is tree shaking. So let's say we have this example that I had before, where I have like a utility library or like a big kind of like um, module that exports a few functions. So here in this case, I have like this, this mass library that has an add and a multiply. And now I kind of just need to add, right? I don't need anything else. But depending on your bundler, you would still get like the whole of mass library. But with rollup, it would, this is the actual output. I'm, I'm not making this up. Um, and you would then just have like the add and how it's being called and just the add function in there. All right, so the, the next thing that makes rollup special is scope hoisting. So if you have like another bundler, so I, this example is Browserify for example. So if I use Browserify with a few modules, then I always have like the kind of like, um, I call it module bubble, but that's definitely not the right word, um, which has a require module and an export and it wraps it around. Um, so as you've seen by the previous examples already is that rollup doesn't do this. Like everything is still on the, on the kind of, on, on the root level in terms of scope. So this obviously means that your bundles are much smaller than when you have like a module wrapper around this. All right, so what, what makes Rollup really great is that they have like an online uh, REPL. And so for the first example, I just kind of want to write up what I had on a previous slide. So we have this module called mass, and then we got export const add is a function, takes in a, b, returns a plus b, export const multiply, also a function, same parameters, but multiplies both of those. All right, so now I want to import add from mass and now I want to add two numbers and I kind of want to console log this as well. And now we got the exact same output that we had on the slide before. We import add and since we're calling add, um, it takes the add function and just puts it into the resulting bundle. So obviously this is for common JS. Um, so 
this is meant to run on Node specifically. We could change this to run the browser if we have like an, like an immediately invoked function execution, then it would wrap it with a function and now this gets ready to be consumed in the browser. All right, I got a few more REPL examples. Most of those uh, have, or like actually all of the upcoming ones, they have been done by Lucas Taggart, who's like a core member of Rollup and recently does all of the releases of Rollup. So the first one is, and you might have already seen this in the previous REPL example that I did, is that Rollup doesn't actually include functions that are unused. So here we see we have like a, a libjs, which has a function um, that actually doesn't do anything. And then we have something that's mutating the window. And so if we import this, it bundles this, but it doesn't bundle the other function. But if we were to change this around and actually do something with the function, like return something and then we use the unused function, then it gets into the bundle. So unless we actually use a function, it's not part of the bundle. All right. Next example. Um, all right, so this is a fun one. Um, so we have a V8 engine, which we um, define it with a constructor, and then we have like a prototype to string, which we say V8, and then we console log V8 engine to string. As we see in the bundle, we have still the, con we have still the constructor, we have the to string, and then we console log this. Now, we also have this v6 engine here. So if we put this back, then now it takes a prototype from v8 engine and is now part of the bundle. But if we remove this, it's not part of the bundle, even though we have the constructor function assigned and even though we have the prototype to string from the V6 engine. <laughs> so the next one is that if we have a library, like in this case, libjs, so there are like two objects that it exports out of. We have something that has an effect, like if I call this, it says hello meetup, a function that doesn't have an effect, and we have a second object that doesn't actually have an effect. So now we are importing both of those in, in our main file, and we're calling the first with the effect. Obviously, it will then say hello meetup. Um, and then we're calling the second one with the effect, and oh, so we're calling the second object with the no effect, and then we're calling the first object with no effect. So if you look at the bundle, the second object is not part of the resulting bundle anymore, but the first object is, and all of the, the methods that it calls are part of this as well. Okay, so the last example that I have. All right, okay, so let's say we have a library. It has a function that it invokes itself, but it actually doesn't do anything. And then we import this thing, and luckily enough, there's no resulting bundle because nothing gets done. But again, as soon as I have any side effects in here, so let's say I want to document get query selector, something, then it becomes part of the bundle. All right, so as we've seen that rollup just does the module transformation and nothing else. So if we want to use something like Babel, TypeScript, JSON, whatever, 
we, we need to use plugins. So a more complex roll-up configuration um, would kind of look like this. I'm sorry, it's a bit small. Um, but there's like, there's literally a plugin for everything. There's a plugin for Babel, there's a plugin for TypeScript, for JSON to, there's also a plugin that kind of tries to um, import CommonJS modules as best as it can. Obviously there is a whole difference here um, because since ES2015 modules are statically analyzable but CommonJS ones are not, um, it just tries the best as it can with tree shaking. But obviously it's not as, as good as with ES2015 modules. So I, th I think like the question is kind of why should I use Rollup? Like especially if I have Webpack somewhere already. So the thing is that both of them ha have like different philosophies. So Webpack um, is more in the sense of, so its creation was more around code splitting and making sure like if I have an application that it produces different smaller bundles plus could also integrate static assets into it. While the philosophy with Rollup is more that it has like flat distributable bundles. And Rich Harris, like the author of Rollup, he had a great post on Medium. So if you haven't read this, you should definitely check this out. And the tagline of this, which he, and the point that he makes is that you should use Webpack for apps and Rollup for libraries. All right, that's about it.